first one to introduce you to the website, okay? So first things first, on this homepage, um, the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention is on the right side, you should see a box that says support, okay? In that support box, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention is near the bottom of that support box, you're obviously gonna see the My Life Advisors phone number, that 844 number, and their hours. But then below that, you're also going to see a link that says send documents to ADP, okay? So what this link, it basically is, is if you guys happen to, like if there was like a, as an example, a garnishment order that happens to come in for one of your, you know, one of your people at your locations, um, and it comes actually to you, um, you guys can actually, instead of actually having to call us, you can actually download that uh, or upload that document to the web portal and send it to our wage garnishment unit so that it can be set up in payroll going forward. So the way to do that is where it says send documents to ADP, you would basically just click on the link, okay? And when you click on that send documents to ADP link, um, it's gonna ask you for the document type. So there is going to be several document types. You'll see a garnishment issue, garnishment order, garnishment release. Um, if there's other, like if you get any tax notices that happen to come to your um, your location, uh, obviously you'll want to probably get that over to Tom, um, but you can actually send that to us since we're gonna be filing your guys' uh, taxes uh, for your company on your behalf. So you can actually send any of those documents here. You'll just upload it. It's gonna ask you for either the employee or the state that the notice is for. And then you'll upload the document. The one thing I will say at the very bottom of this send documents to ADP, there is a section to put in comments. At the very minimum, you should put in your contact information. You should put in your name, your phone number, and your email address. So that if like per se our wage garnishment unit has to get back to you to ask a qualifying question or send you a confirmation, anything of that sort, uh, they'll know who to contact. What okay. do we put in for the company code? Uh, company code, uh, that's a great question. So um, I will, I think I, I will actually send you a, uh, I will send you a listing of what your, uh, what your company codes are so that you know. Okay. Um, and then that way it'll be a little bit more clear because right now, yeah, it just says the company code and it has the three digit number. That's a great question. I will send that to you. Okay. All right. Um, you can go ahead and cancel out of that. Okay. Um, then just to the right of that support section, do you guys see like a small blue tab that has a question mark? And then mm -hmm. uh, vertically it says need help. So this is going to be a big help for you uh, going forward as well. Um, if you ever need to send like a a case to our my life advisors like maybe there's something they need to research or you got a question on this is where you can actually create a case that goes to our service portal and they will get back to you once they've researched it or you can obviously call them but then another thing you can do in this need help is you can actually start a chat with them if the chat is online so you'll be able to chat with them with any questions that you might have okay so that need help is going to be a, a big help for you going forward as well if you guys ever forget something or have a question that comes up. Um, and then obviously your uh, the employees will have access to contact our My Life Advisors as well. I would always suggest, and I told Tom this as well, I would always suggest that if they have questions about their personal account, you direct them to contact the My Life Advisors. That way you guys won't be the middle person in the loop. If it's a question about their account, they should be calling us directly to get that one-on-one -on -one help. Okay. Also, does it deal with uh, injuries as well, like workers' comp? No, and I'm, that's actually something I'm going to show you. So that's a okay. good question. I'll show I'll show you where to start the uh, the claim uh, on that. If a workers' comp claim needs to be started, I'll show you that. Okay. Um, actually, I'll show you that um, now because the next thing we're going to go to is at the top. Um, where it has all of your different tabs, there's one that says resources. It's right next to home, okay? So if you go ahead and click on resources, 
um, the first thing I want to show you, you guys, this might be self-explanatory for you if you're pretty computer literate, but at the very bottom of just as the, we're going through the resources tab, at the very bottom, there's that expand menu. If you ever click on that, it's going to show you everything underneath the resources tab or the my team or the process, whatever it is. It'll show you everything. If you like that expanded look, you can always have that because it's your profile. If you prefer to have the collapsed one because that's too busy, you can just click on collapse menu and it'll go back to the collapse menu. Entirely up to you. We just wanted to show you that. Okay. So um, I'm going to be showing you where to get to the total source forms library because this houses all of our different forms that are available. So if you go to resources, you're going to go to then company information and then you're going to want to select total source forms library. Don't select forms library because if you select forms library, nothing's going to be there. Always select total source forms library. Okay. And then when you go there, it's going to have obviously a listing of all the different forms that we have in our system. Um, some of them are just informational that show you how to do certain things in the system. Um, you can filter by category where it says select all. There's forms for administrators, the benefits, drug-free workplace, uh, all different types of forms there. You can also, if you're not sure what category it's in, you can search by all categories and just type in a keyword. So for right now, go ahead and type in workers comp and then hit enter. <clears throat> and then once you do that, um, you're going to want to select, it'll show all of the forms that have workers comp in the actual form name, document name. Go ahead and go down to the one. It should probably be the second from the bottom that says workers compensation claim reporting guide and click on that link. Okay. So entirely up to you if you want to print this out now. If you don't, it's perfectly fine. It's always going to be there in the forms library. Um, but this actually shows you what you need to do when uh, you need to start a workers comp claim. So what you're going to do, and I will show you this later uh, in this tutorial, but um, as an administrator, you're going to go to the people tab, you'll go to employment, and then you would go to workers compensation claims. You're going to toggle over to the employee that you need to put the claim in for, and then you're just going to click on the button that says new claims. Once you do that, you're just going to put in the claim form, and then you're going to submit that. That's going to go over to our uh, our workers' comp team and our third-party administrator. Okay. Now, this form also has, if you need to follow up on a claim that you put in, it also has our 800 number to our risk management claim unit. And then it also has, if you guys decide, instead of actually doing the form online, if you want to do the form over the phone, there's an 800 number that's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, that you can actually uh, put in the the, uh, the claim to our third party administrator. So you have an option of doing it online or by phone. Okay. So you can go ahead and X out of that, but I just wanted to show you that in our forms library. Okay. <clears throat> um, the next tab we're going to go to is the uh, the people tab. Okay. So under the people tab, this is where for your particular group, you can actually, that you have access to, you can actually, if you need to update uh, someone's like employment information or their personal profile, you can do it here. So your employees have access to update their, their profile information as far as like their name, their address, general stuff like that, direct deposit. Um, you guys also have access to do uh, those items as well. Um, and then employment information you guys can actually adjust if you need to, okay? So as an example, we're going to go to people, we're going to go to employment, and let's go to employment profile. Okay? And once you're at employment profile, it's gonna show the very first employee in alphabetical order that you have access to in your, lo in your location that you have access to. Okay, so you're going to see on the left hand side, you're going to see the position, who they report to, 
um, if they're part time or full time. Um, in the middle, in the status section, you're going to see if they're an active employee, their hire date. Um, and then in the, on the right side, you're going to see like their pay. Um, so you'll see like their, their hourly pay. Um, or if any of them happen to be salaried, you'll see their, uh, their per pay period, their weekly salary amount. Okay. So in, in, in any of those sections that you need to update, um, you can actually go to like, let's say you need to change someone's position as an example. Um, you can go to the position box at the very bottom of the position box. There's an edit button. You would click on that edit. You're going to have to put in an effective date for the other fields to open up. So if you're following along, you can just use today's date as a, an effective date, just as an example. Okay. And then once you put in the effective date, you're going to see the other fields open up for you. So you're going to see, for instance, like the first person on my list, uh, their job title is a cocktail, cocktail waitress. Okay. Um, if you needed to change their job title, when you click on the little uh, drop down menu next to the job title, you're going to see the different job titles that we have in our system that you can choose from to update. Okay. If you happen to have a new job title that you need to create for someone that's already in our system, um, all you have to do is just click on that small little plus sign next to the job title. And then you have to create a job title code. Uh, for instance, if like an administrator, as an example, you can put a code as like ADM. And then underneath that, you'll put the full job title, which is administrator. And then you would hit done. And that particular job title will show up on your list going forward. Okay. But it's pretty, it's pretty easy. It's very self-explanatory. Um, you just have to make sure you put in the effective date of what the change is, and then you adjust, adjust the information from there. Okay. Um, for now you can go ahead and cancel out and just go back to the employment profile. Um, same thing you would do for regular pay. If you guys are, are changing someone's pay, you would just click on the edit button for regular pay. Um, you will put in their new hour, put in the effective date, their new hourly rate, or if they're salary, you put in their new, uh, new weekly salary amount. Okay. And put done. Now, one thing to note, let's say that you knew you guys were, were going to put in like a merit increase for someone. Let's say their hourly rate was going up from $14 an hour to $15 an hour. So, but it's not going to be effective until let's just say July 1st. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, you would actually still put in the effective date of July 1st. It's a future date. And you would still put in the uh, rate increase and you would hit done. When you come back to the employment profile, since it's only July 20 or June 25th, it's still going to show their current rate. Okay. But then once you get to July 1st, it's automatically going to show up as the new rate that you put in. Okay. So don't think if you put in an, uh, a regular pay increase for a future date, once you hit done, it will take it. It's just going to show the current rate until we actually get to that date. Okay. Is there a place to see the upcoming dates that might be put in? Um, so there is an actual uh, history, if you will, um, that you can, if you look at, like, for instance, if you're in the regular pay section, um, do you see right where it says regular pay to the right of that in that box? Do you see a small little icon? Oh, yeah. I see. Since we've already opened July the 1st, I see a dotted one there. Yeah. Okay. So if you click on that, that's going to show the history for you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we're still going to stay under the uh, stay under the uh, the people tab, but to the point of, of, of starting the workers' comp claim, um, just like we, what we talked about on the form, you would go to people, you would go to employment, and then you would go over to where it says workers' compensation claim. Okay. So if you click on that workers' compensation claim, it's going to show the first person in your list or the first person, if you change to employment profile, the person you were on before, it'll start where that, with that person. 
you're just going to want to either toggle over to the employee that you're putting in the claim for, or you can click on the employee search, that blue box, and it will show a listing of all the employees you have access to, and you can click on that employee from there. So either one will work. Um, and then once you have that employee up, below that, there's a blue button that says new claim. You would just click on that, and then you would just fill in the claim information and submit it from there. So pretty simple. Okay. Um, one more thing I am going to show you in the people section that you guys don't have access quite. Well, you guys have access to the section, but there's nothing in that section yet. Um, you will get more information about this later once we have um, some other um, companies actually added in. But you guys will be able to um, uh, either deny or approve time off. So once we actually set up the time off for your employees in our system and, the, and their hours balances, um, the employees will have access once we do that to actually request time off in the system. And then you'll be able to actually, actually um, either approve or deny those employees' uh, requests. So basically what you would do is you would go to people, you would go down to time off, and then you could go to where it says list of requests. Okay. So there you're going to see a list of the different employees that you have access to. Right now it's obviously going to show no pending requests or approved requests or denied requests because we don't have the time off set up yet. Um, but once you once they do and once they start putting in requests, that'll be tracked here. All you have to do is if you have a pending request, you would just click on the employee's name and then from there you'll be able to approve or deny that request for time off. Okay? And it will be tracked in our system. Um, another thing that you can do is if, let's say, someone is out sick um, or you need to put in the actual request for that employee, you will be able to do that as well with your administrative access. You would just go to that employee's name under this list of requests, and then there's a, there's a button to request on behalf of that you can click on, and then you can put in that request and then actually approve that request for that employee. So you have access to do both ends if you ever need to. So that's not something that you'll need to do right now, but that's something that will be upcoming that I just wanted to bring to your attention just to introduce it. Okay. Um, I had a quick question. Um, sure. Sorry. So I had, I had a cook called out six today, this morning. Uh, do we put it in today or? No. No. Um, so, so we're not tracking it in the system quite yet. So you wouldn't actually put that in the system yet. Got it. Yep. Got it. Yeah, but we will make it clear when that does get rolled out. Got it. All right. Okay. No problem. Um, so now let's go to process. Let's go to the process tab. Okay. A couple things I wanted to show you in this process tab. Um, we're going to go to process. We're going to we're going to go to HR. And then we're going to go ahead and go to terminate. So if you guys need to terminate someone in the system, um, it's very important that you actually terminate them in the system so they no longer show as an active employee. Um, a couple of things on termination. I would not terminate them in the system if they gave like their, let's say they gave a week notice or two week notice. I would wait until their actual last day to actually put in their termination. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one thing, one reason is if you put in their termination and future date it for a future termination date, um, if they happen to, if you guys happen to extend them or they decide they're not going to leave, you have to backtrack and go back in and, and remove that termination. So it's something you can do. It's just creating more work for yourself. So I would just wait until their actual last day to put them in as a terminated employee. Okay. So once you're in process HR and terminate, um, you're going to see the first employee on your list show up. All you have to do is click on that. Yes. Can I just keep it two seconds? Just for these guys, it might be helpful. We skipped over putting in the stars next to things that are we regularly use. Did you talk about, I don't think you talked about that, but you can star things and they show up in the star section. Yep. Yep. So things that you, things that you want to uh, actually show up uh, on that homepage, on the far right, 
um, just below where it says search workforce now, there's wording that says add to favorites, and then there's an empty star there. Okay. If you ever wanted that particular page to be in your favorites, all you would do is once you have that page up, you would click on that, and that will be added to your favorites. Okay. And then what will happen is to get to your favorites, um, in your in in your in your section where it says home resources my team people process there's a star there so if you click on that star you'll see your favorites that are there that you can click on and it will take you to that page okay and again if you ever forget how to do any of these things again you can reach the my life advisors they can show you how to do this again this is just an introduction for you I know it's new. Okay. Um, real quick, I'm sorry, quick question not, uh, with the termination. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, somebody submits it, they, they, uh, they have it in writing. Is there a way that we could uh, submit that with, uh, with the actual termination, like the, the resignation letter? Yes. Yep. Yep. Good okay. question. So that's something that you can actually link into this termination template. Okay. So what will happen is what you'll do is uh, if you're on the termination section right now in the process, HR and terminate, um, you're going to want to select the employee out of your employee list so that they show up. And then once they're showing up there, their name, you would click on the start button. When you click on that start button, it's going to open up the termination template. Okay. You can actually click on it now if you want. Um, obviously, you're going to want to cancel out of it. You're not going to put in a termination now. But if you want, you can click on it to start it so you can see what it looks like. There's going to be a field for you to put in the date of termination, which is a required field. It has an asterisk by it. Um, so you have to put that in. And then you'll also have to select from the drop down menu the reason for termination. Okay. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to, in the drop down menu, there's a laundry list of different termination reasons. Okay. You'll choose the one that best fits. If none of the specific ones fit, there are two in that list that says other voluntary and another one that says other involuntary. Okay. Other voluntary obviously means that they resign themselves. Other involuntary means that um, means that you guys had to uh, let them go on your end. Okay, so you'll select the reason, um, and then you, there is a there is a uh, a section there where you can actually attach your document, like the resignation letter or the reason for the termination. You can attach it there in the template. Okay. Um, it's going to take you through and then all you have to do is from there you just click on looks good It'll take you through the different pages from there And then it'll come to the end where it'll say done and it'll confirm that it's done And then that employee will be terminated in the system um, as of that date Okay A couple of things on the termination um, If you need to do a quick calculation uh, for like their final payment um, to, so that you know how much is, is, is being taken out for taxes. You can actually do a quick calc there. Um, you'll get into that more when you have your payroll call, um, if you ever need to do the quick calc. Um, you'll also be able to call that My Life number and be. Um, a, you can uh, reach our payroll department and a payroll rep will, re will uh, help you with that quick calc, quick calc if you ever need to, okay? But that is available. Um, once you've actually terminated them in the system, what happens is there is a case that automatically goes to our COBRA team. If, it's, if it was an employee that, you know, was benefit eligible, um, our COBRA team will actually send them out a COBRA kit so that that employee can decide if they want to pay for extended benefits themselves. We would actually, on ADP Total Source's side, we would actually work with that employee to collect the monthly payments if they wanted to extend their COBRA benefits. You guys would not have to be involved in that in that part, okay? All you have to do is make sure that you put in their termination in the system. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, no problem. Um, there, there was uh, one more uh, section I did want to show you guys. Um, I know we're, we're past 430, but I did want to show you this. Um, 
We'll stay under process. Um, we'll, we'll go to HR again, but then we're going to go to where it says place on leave. Okay. So what this is, is if some, if one of your employees is going to be on an extended leave of absence, like if they're going to be gone for like a couple of weeks, a month, a couple of months, number one, they should be bringing to you like some sort of doc, doctor's, uh, you know, notice recommendation that they're going to be out of work for, you know, an extended period of time. Okay. So, um, and, and in this place on leave section, you can actually attach that doctor's notification to the, to the leave template as well. Okay. But to place them on leave, again, you'll go to process, you'll go to HR, and then you'll go to place on leave. Okay. Then under selected employee, you're going to click on the search and it'll show your employee list that you'll select from. And then once you have that employee selected, you're going to click on the button that says start a lead event. Okay. So again, that opens up the lead template, very self-explanatory. Anything with an asterisk is a required field. So you'll put in the date of the leave. Okay. You're going to put in also the leave reason. Okay. Uh, from the drop down menu. And then you'll be able to attach the actual doctor's notification that you receive. Okay. Um, there is another uh, date there that's there that you can put in, which is the date of return. When someone goes on leave of absence, you may not always know when they're going to return. So you can always leave the return date blank if you don't know. Even if you do know on that notice, like sometimes it may have a specific date, like it may say on August 1st, they will return to work. If you want, you can still leave that blank because there is a chance that that person can be extended past August 1st, in which they will provide you a new note that says we're extending it another month, okay? So you can always reactivate an employee to active status once they actually do come back, which is very easy. You can just do that in that employment profile. Under the status section, it'll say leave of absence. You just have to click on the edit button there and change them to an active employee and just put in the date that they were active again. Okay. Um, once you place an employee on the leave of absence, um, they'll show as on leave in the system. They'll be removed from the payroll batches. Um, and then our leaves administrative team will be uh, notified once you put in that leave of absence for that employee. Okay. All right. Um, so that was basically it. I mean, that's just some 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 basic administrative functions, so you kind of know how to navigate. Um, I would suggest that you just go ahead and go into like the people section in the personal profile and employment profile, and then just uh, just look into it. Um, just look at at what you're reviewing, what you're looking at. Um, I didn't show you the new hire template under the process HR uh, hire slash rehire section because um, tomorrow um, Griselle is actually going to show you how when you guys start approving your uh, application, your applicants, uh, your new as new hires, there's going to be basically the information on their application is going to feed into the new hire template uh, for you to finish up and she'll show you how that works tomorrow okay um other than that is there any questions i can i can answer for you guys while you're on right now let's not forget the tom one about the benefits you and i talked about about them getting loaded up and yes i'm sorry tom i'm sorry tom thank you so um for your guys's benefits i know you guys are eagerly awaiting to actually enroll in benefits i know there's uh, a, a few of you that have already enrolled in benefits that you guys were rolled out a little bit earlier in our system, so you've already signed up. But for the others of you that have not yet, um, our benefits team is going to be opening up a window either uh, this afternoon, this evening, or in the morning, okay? I'm going to be alerting Tom to let him know once that window is open. Once it's open, um, you guys are going to have until next Tuesday, June 30th, um, to, uh, to complete your, uh, enrollments in our system. Okay. So there's two ways you can actually enroll once it opens up. When you log into your web portal, 
um, there'll be a window that automatically pops up that says benefit enrollment, and you can start enrollment right then and there online. Okay. Um, if you need to start and then come back to it later, you can always save and exit in the middle, but you need to make sure that you're done by June 30th with it. Um, for those of you that prefer to actually enroll over the phone, you will be able to call that 844 number, the My Life Advisor number, um, and actually enroll over the phone into your benefits. Okay. So that's going to be opening up very, very soon for you. Um, I'm just waiting for the uh, confirmation. And then, team, also, I just sent everybody a list of people who are um, able to sign up for benefits, uh, the benefits eligible employees. So there's a complete list. So it's not just all managers, also hourly employees on there that qualify with enough um, hours per week. So make sure that the rest of the team, if you see their name on there for your restaurant, make sure they're reminded today, tomorrow, to get signed up before Tuesday because... Once we go past that cutoff date, we're not going to be able to sign up. Okay. And again, like like anything else, when you're enrolling, uh, if you have any questions, you can call the My Life Advisors. They can answer any questions for not only you, but your team members to call and then take their enrollments over the phone if they need to. So either way, online or, or by phone, you guys will have access here pretty soon. I would think by tomorrow morning sometime but I will let Tom know. Any other questions I can I can answer for you right now uh, while I'm on the phone that you can think of? <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I encourage you guys to just get, get used to the, the web portal, uh, you know, navigate around. You'll find it's very simple to do. You guys have your call uh, in the morning with Griselle on the applicant tracking portion. And uh, other than that, um, welcome to uh, ADP Total Source. <laughs>